In this video, how to get PHP errors to display on the page. In PHP, unless you're absolutely perfect, you're going to have PHP errors from time to time. And it's just something that we do, whether it's a mistype or um, not remembering a function exactly right. But to not be able to see those errors is a problem. And typically, PHP, the PHP INI is set up to display those errors. Error reporting may just be turned off in your environment. Like on wp-config.php file, you can turn on debugging. If debugging is off, errors typically won't show on your page. So if you have a page that pops up that says, there's a problem loading this page, the WordPress default. You can turn on debug and you can see what those errors are. From time to time, you're gonna have errors that you can't see by doing that, which are notices. They're not necessarily warnings or fatal errors. They're just notices and they're notices of, of something that you've done wrong in the, in the coding or someone else has done wrong that you need to fix. So in this video, I wanna show you guys how to turn on errors for just the page that you're working on so that you can see what those errors are. Let's get started on it. So here on the ideapro.io, we've created a page called example.php and we just have welcome to the example. So here on our code, we just have welcome to the example. Now, if we wanted to use WordPress debugging, we could pull in WordPress, the WordPress core by using WP dash load.php and we could require that at the top of this page because this website is a WordPress website. Now we're on a standalone page, not inside of a plugin or inside of a theme. So we would need to require that WP load.php on this file, but we're not going to do that in this video. We're only going to show you how to do the PHP errors, which can be shown on a standalone PHP site or page, and it can be used even with WordPress debugging turned off, okay? So here at the top of the page, so let's, let, first let's do an error, okay? So here we're just gonna say echo dollar sign Mike, okay? And we're gonna save that and we're gonna go back to our browser and we're gonna refresh the page. It's not going to say anything, okay? So if we say Mike is the best, save and we come back over and refresh it just says is the best let's take that to another line here let's actually add a couple of breaks before this so we can bring it down to another line let's do that and so there we go so now it just says is the best and it doesn't say um might because that variable doesn't exist so if we said name let's do name instead of Mike, we come back over here and refresh, it still doesn't say anything because we haven't set anything to that name variable. And in the actual error logs, you're gonna have a notice that says name doesn't exist or, or dollar sign Mike doesn't exist because when we were using Mike, because we haven't set that variable, okay? So from here, we have error code, error checking turned off and we're not getting that notice, right? So we can come back over here and go up here to the top and we can say init set, and this is a you know, PHP function. And then in the first variable, we're gonna say display errors. Did I spell it right? And then we're gonna set this to one, okay? And then we're gonna do init set, display startup, startup errors. And we're also gonna set that to one. And then finally, we're going to say error reporting. And inside of here, we're gonna say E underscore all. Okay, so now if we save this, go back to our page and refresh, now we have a notice that says notice unde undefined variable name, and then it tells us on line nine. So if we go back here, here's line nine, and here's our undefined variable name. 
So we can simply just say dollar sign name is equal to, we're gonna say Mike, save, come back over here and refresh the page. Our notice is gone and it says Mike is the best, okay? So that cleaned up our notice, right? So now we're gonna call in a function. We're gonna say echo, what is your name? And we're gonna save that. We're gonna come over here and we're gonna refresh and it says fatal error because it doesn't see that function anywhere in the, in, in the page because we're not linking to anything else. So just whatever is on this page is what needs to be pulled in. So we would need that function on this page or linked, you know, brought in with an include or a require or something like that to not get that fatal error. Okay, so fatal error means there is nothing after that that's gonna continue. So if we come down here and this will not show. So we go over here and refresh. And again, it's not showing. Once it hits that fatal error that it can't find a function, it will just stop the page completely, okay? So what we need to do is we need to bring in that function, but first, Let's look at something. So we have fatal error, uncaught, uncaught error, called to undefined function, what is your name? Now, if we come back in here and turn display errors to zero, come back and refresh, it just says Mike is the best because it does not have error reporting turned on. So now we're looking for this line right here that is, says I know he is. Right, So we're looking for that line. We come back over here and refresh and we're like, what's going on? Why isn't this working? Why isn't the footer of my website showing? So we simply come in, turn display errors back to one, refresh, and now it tells us that there's an, a missing function. We're like, oh, okay. So we're gonna come up here. We can come up here a little good ways and say function what is your name? And we're just gonna return Tom. Okay, so now we come back and refresh and it says, Tom, I know he is <laughs> because we don't have any breaks or anything before here. So let's do a couple breaks in there and we don't have anything after this. So let's put a couple breaks after that. There we go. So it says, welcome to the example. Mike is the best. Tom, I know he is. And so now that function is there and we don't have that problem. So this is very, very important when you're trying, when you're developing a site, when you're trying to find why the site's not loading or why things look funny, you probably need to turn this on because you could have literally just misspelled the, the name value, right? Let's say you typed names because the name was way up at the top of the page and you're using it down at the bottom or something, right? And so now you have the names value and you come over here and you refresh and you're like, you know, notice undefined, undefined variable names. Well, if this isn't on and you get this to zero, you come back over here and you refresh the say, page and it says, where's Mike? Mike blank is the best. I, why is Mike's name not coming up? And, and then you have to go through here and you go, what's going on with the code? But while you're developing, if you just turn that to one, come back over and refresh. Now it says undefined variable names. And then you go, well, what was that supposed to be? Name. Oh, I spelled it. There we go. And now it works. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, click the like button. Thank you for watching, commenting, and subscribing. And I will see you in the next one. Thanks.